Hello and welcome. <sighs> so I want to talk about women and trust and the ultimate place I want to bring that to is around self-trust. So that's part of my desire to slow down so that I'm actually here. <laughs> and welcome to those of you who are just joining. As always, whether you're watching live or you're watching the replay. Um, <laughs> hi, nice to see you, Penelope. <laughs> Uh, I always welcome questions, I always welcome comments, I always welcome the shares from your own life in the way that that uh, flows with this topic and uh, whether that's agreement or whether that's uh, disagreement, all are welcome. Hi Sam, <laughs> I love the hearts, I love the hearts. So. <clears throat> Let's see, um, where do I wanna start? So I think I actually, the, the notes I wrote go in a different order here. <laughs> but um, <laughs> now you're gonna do, I'll distract me with all your hearts and I won't be able to keep up. <laughs> but I, what I wanna start with is the story of actually why I wanted to do this video. And what happened was I read a post on Facebook <clears throat> of course, that's the starting point for everything. Anyway, I read a post on Facebook about a story of a, a woman, and I don't really know the woman who wrote it. I certainly don't know the woman in the story. So it's just about then how that went into me and where I went with it. <laughs> um, but the story was, there was a woman and she was sharing about three people she knew. <clears throat> and one was was a woman who was in a relationship with a man and had some concerns and so she went and talked to his ex-girlfriend and then had some of her concerns you know maybe validated uh, by this ex-girlfriend and then shared with her boyfriend what the ex had said so I don't want to go too far into the story again because I don't actually know the people and the point is not so much that. But this the post that I read, the woman who was sharing it was saying her takeaway was, hey women, um, don't do that. We need to be able to trust each other. That's sort of like breaking the woman code. You broke this woman's trust by sharing with your now boyfriend, her ex, what she had said to you in confidence about their relationship. I'm not disagreeing with that. I, I, I think it's, you know, it's probably best that we just don't share about people behind their backs. <laughs> but what had me want to then do this video was um, that in addition to that, or I think deeper than that, was what I'm imagining is that this woman who was in relationship with a man, that she wasn't trusting herself. And that there's kind of two layers to that. That it's not that one should never go talk to another person to, you know, have your feelings validated or to get external data or perspective, but she sensed something in her relationship. And rather than going like, oh, I, I trust my gut, or maybe she was trusting her gut and that's why she talked to this other woman, but th there was a place where she needed it validated. And the only, not the only reason, but a reason why she might then have shared with her current boyfriend and this woman's ex, what this other woman said was, was like to shore up her own truth, like see someone else says it. And again, I think this is very human. Um, I'm speaking specifically to women because I see this, I've felt it inside myself. I'm rem I remember gosh, this is like 20 years ago now. It's hard to believe that I'm old enough to say that, but, um, and even more, maybe it was like 20, 22 years ago. But I had a similar situation where something was going on with my boyfriend 
And another woman said something that validated my experience. And then in the heat of the moment with my boyfriend, I used what she said to validate what was true for me. I was like, well, yeah, she says that too. And it's basically the part of me that wasn't willing to say, hey, I'm having this experience. This is happening for me. This is not okay. You can't talk to me like this or this, you know, your behavior is such and such. And I, and I'm willing to stand in it on my own two feet. So that was there for me. And I just saw a way again, without knowing these people directly, I could be projecting all over their story, but a way that that's also true in this, this kind of triangulation to use your word, Michael, of, um, of, of talking to each other. But ultimately what I would say is that that came down to a place where she felt uncertain about standing on in her own truth or her trusting herself. And so again, not to say that there's not other pieces to deal with along the way, but the part that I care about, why I love to work with women, what I, you know, a, a big, big pieces from a lot of different angles that I work with in my women's programs and in the women's live retreats I lead comes down to this place of like, wait, what do I already know in myself? What do I actually know to be true? And am I willing to stand on it without needing other people to back me up? Without needing to go to somebody else so that I go like, oh God, thank God, I'm, it's, I'm not, you know, sometimes we do need to hear, like, I'm not crazy. But then can I still, can I stand in like, this is my truth, can I stand in this is my truth even if I find out that they actually don't have that experience? And then can I stand, you know, in this dynamic, it was like me and my boyfriend or this woman and her boyfriend, can I stand with another human being and share what I know to be true without needing to use either other people, right? Like they said so too, or I'm not the only one that thinks this, or, you know, so-and-so said that that's how it was in her relationship with you too. That's all basically, you know, we could look at the, the communication and deal with what I would call the surface of that. But underneath that, what there is to deal with is like, am I or am you, are you willing and capable? And, and I would call it like, there's a, like an ego strength, a healthy ego strength that needs to be developed. Do I, have I developed that? Am I willing to stand in it through whatever fear that says, oh, I, this is what I feel. This is what I'm experiencing. This is actually what I know to be true for me. So pausing for a moment, um, Penelope says, yes, this is such a huge challenge. I know it's helpful to get validation. I'm not crazy, but the main thing is self-trust. Yes. So that's the, that's the place I really wanted to come at this. And when I sat down so that that's, you know, I shared the story of a place I remember that coming up for me. And then what sparked it was this Facebook thread and I guess what I really wanted in that was like, yes, what she was saying in that Facebook thread is completely true and something we can learn about let's, you know, how we treat each other as women in honoring each other's trust and how we share with each other, but also to understand where this woman was probably coming from. Wow, she didn't trust herself enough to not need that. And can we also have some, um, like compassion or at least to see that and then address that piece and I think part of the reason again I, I see this in humans like all human beings <laughs> and I see it a lot with women and maybe it's just the women who come to me I don't know but I see it a lot with women is like how much mental energy is spent I think also because there's a cultural conversation about um whether it's okay to trust. And for women, in, there are a lot of places where that's stronger and it has larger ramifications. But, you know, I hear this question a lot like, well, how do I know if I can trust him? Or um, especially, you know, frankly, between women, this feeling of like, wait, women aren't trustable or I can't trust other women. And I want to, the conversation I want to bring in here with this video is really the sense of, um, do you trust yourself? And I guarantee if you 
I, I kind of really I want to stand and you could come at it from both sides, which is if you're not trusting women, chances are actually it's because you don't trust yourself. And the, when you really find that place where you trust yourself, um, what I really believe is true is that the other part, whether women are trustable or is he trustable, can I trust him? How do I know? How do I tell? What, when do I tell if it's trustable? That all becomes irrelevant because you fundamentally stand on what I like to call the groundless ground. And it's paradoxically the most unstable. It has nothing, it has no data to back it up. It has no one else to back you up. It has nothing. That's why I call it groundless. It has nothing to stand on but your own truth, which is the most solid ground you can possibly ever stand on. So this mental chatter, I would say, and really I think it's a huge energy leak for women which is um, thinking about it in the abstract, you know, when you're not even with a person, but how am I gonna know if they're trustable or are they trustable or should, can I, will I know if they're trustable? How do I trust? Is it okay to trust? Like a, it's like this And frankly, it takes so much energy. It takes so much energy. And that, where that attention actually is, is out. It's taking all that energy and it's going out and looking out there and going like, how am I gonna find out out there? I'll keep looking out there and see, do I get the, um, the signals that it's trustable, not trustable? Like it's like, a, it's like a bat sending out those sonograms, you know, like ping, am I gonna get trustable, not trustable, trustable? But all that energy is actually going out. And I believe that if we take that energy Oh, there's a second piece to that, actually, before I skip to this. It's like that energy goes out with even the questions, but then so much of the time, then we're also, whatever we decide, yes, he's trustable, no, he's not trustable, or she, you know, we make it sort of a decision. And then we spend a shit ton of energy <laughs> backing it up. Well, they don't trust her either, so therefore I'm right. Well, he did that, so now I know I'm right. And again, it's actually, these are specifics, the kind of like little specifics I'm giving, but the, the underlying energy is once again out. <laughs> Thank you, Allison, for all, the, <laughs> for all the hearts. I love it. <laughs> See, I'm getting validation. Um, what do they call that? The, like the serotonin hit? But the, so the underlying uh, like energetic imprint of that is like all, all this energy from the inside and out, whether it's, you know, how am I going to know, or do I trust, or is it trust, or can I, you know, like, da -da -da -da, it's going out. <laughs> now, now I'm just losing my train of thought. <laughs> and then even the like backing it up, look, because we have to go out here for the data. I'm looking at his behavior for the data. I'm looking at her thoughts for the data. I'm listening to you for the data. And it's shoring ourselves up because we're afraid to stand on that groundless ground. And I, I don't say that as a judgment. I don't say like we're scared to stand on that groundless ground as a judgment, like I'm pointing a finger at you. I, I know that feeling. And uh, some of, this is some of the deepest work that I've done. It's some of the deepest work that I, that I do with women is fundamentally uh, standing with consistency. So again, it's not perfection or that any of us are going to land there and never step off or never be swayed or whatever. But with consistently, consistency is like finding that place where I can stand on the groundless ground of my own experience and what I know to be true. And to actually trust, and it really, it's the bodily experience. It's the part that goes like, I don't want to be here. And then immediately, you know, my mind might want to go, well, well, why not? And is that true? And like, do I have to da 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 da? And all of that, mostly, I would say, is just energy expenditure out. The part that says, I don't want to be here. It's like, what if I, what if I actually just listen to that? Does that mean you bolt in every moment you don't want to be there? Probably not. 
But rather than immediately going to like, well, I have to, now I need to come up with like some logical data to back it up. What if I just listen to it? A woman I was working with um, recently, the action that we gave to her was just to go to, like to take herself to the bathroom every time she had some, something, whether it was, I don't want to be here or I don't like this or this, she had a particular piece uh, for her. It showed up in her hands. You know, other people have a sense in their gut or uh, I know I work with a woman who she's like her, she has a sensation in her pelvis that literally, literally tells her like, yes and no. Uh, I have a big thing that shows up in my solar plexus. Uh, for mo almost every woman I know, if we do the work, you can actually find it in your body and there's this thing. But this woman, it was a piece that showed up in her hands around like a yes or a no or a I don't want to be here. And, and we worked out like she could just say, I, excuse me, I'm going to the bathroom, which gave her this little, um, it's like a, like a bubble, right? You go in the bathroom, you can lock the door, you're alone. And it gives us that, that space, not so much to think, but to let go of all of the both internal and external judgments of like, well, is that true? Is that not true? Is that okay? What if I, like again, right? Energy expenditure out. And I believe that's just a huge waste. It's a huge waste of women's energy, how much of that cyclical running and how much of it goes outward rather than into like, oh, I know I don't like this. That's the only thing I have to know. I mean, there's a huge thing right now about, uh, I mean, it's about Aziz Ansari and a woman who went on a date and there's lots more I could say about this, but something that's very clear in it is like she didn't want to give him oral sex. And she did, right or wrong, his fault, her fault, irrelevant. Not, I mean, not irrelevant, irrelevant in like, like these are useful conversations to happen. happen. But in this place of self-trust, what would it be? Like, frankly, I think this is, this is this revolution in both relating and in between men and women, but also just in the world. Like a woman says, I don't want to do this. And that's the full sentence. That's the entire conversation that happens inside her is I don't want to do this full stop. And that is truly the groundless ground. And that is, that's what I'm calling self-trust. So the question really becomes, how do we learn this and how do we practice it? And that I believe is, um, it's layered and I, I use the word practice on purpose which is that I there is there's a place where there's just life and the way we live it that's what one of my teachers Teo says there's no such thing as practice there's only life in the way we live it and that at certain stages in certain areas of our life we do take on practices because it's necessary to set those in place so that we can learn to live life the way we want to live it. So I see that really as a practice. And again, this is one of the biggest things in all its facets. It comes into um, how we relate to our coworkers and our boss or, our, or even our purpose in life, right? Do I actually trust myself what it is I feel to be true about my purpose or my work in the world or my uh, in relation to my boss, in relation to my coworkers, um, how do I relate with this with my children, with my lover, uh, with my co-parent, with you know? So, so it comes the the spectrum of how this comes up is wide, but the but this actual piece that we work on, I would say, this is one of the biggest pieces I work on with women, and uh, sometimes it's in the longer programs where we have time and get to meet with each other over time, but also in weekend retreats. Like I have a, a weekend retreat called Sacred Sovereignty coming up at in the middle of February. I believe it's the 16th, 17th, and 18th. And in all the different practices and in all the different ways of relating of women to each other and the ways that of bringing that in, a huge piece of that will be this piece, what I would call self-trust. That's a huge part of sacred sovereignty. That's what it, ha like, um, the beauty of getting to practice in that kind of a setting is actually putting oneself into a situation where that might get tested. 
and then being willing to feel all the feelings that come up when you stand on the groundless ground. When you simply speak, I don't like this, or I don't wanna be here, or please would you move closer to me, or I would like to hold your hand, or you know, all like there's a simplicity, and then being with the feeling of uh, what it is to simply own that, or say that, or share that, or declare that, without caveats, without data to back it up, without you know other sources of why that is a good idea or should be or shouldn't be or you know without pulling on all that like to sit in the fire of your own truth without expending all that energy out to back it up so the little piece i want to leave with here is more of a seed of how to practice this and so any of you who are here who either have something that you want to share or if you have questions uh, any place I could be more clear or a specific question about your life I absolutely welcome that now I'm probably going to complete in about five minutes so now would be a great time to bring that forward um, but there's a huge differentiating between our inner knowing and story. So often, um, again, if I'm working with a woman, she'll land and, and, and one of the ways to tell is our inner knowing is incredibly concise and simple. So our inner knowing says things like, yes, no, I like that. I don't like that. I want that. I don't want that. Our inner knowing, it says things very simply, and I'm sure there are other nuances, but, and then our story says, because So our story has a lot more words and a lot more complexity. So that's a way to distinguish. And the purpose of this, of, of, of me, Partly like this video, the purpose of this video and then the piece I'm going to say next is not to say that you're wrong about the story. You might be 100% right. I say that doesn't totally matter. The inner knowing is more important. And that there's energy lost in the story, whether it's true or not true. So just a place to notice. So often I'll work with a woman and she'll, there'll be this, this like kathunk and there's, you know, one sentence. There's like three words to a sentence and we're like, yes. And then it'll start to follow on and she'll start to share like, well, because he da 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 and, and this, that, and the other. And, and then we know that that's story. And all that is, is a defense mechanism, like a survival mechanism that kicked in that was like, holy shit. I just said a truth, and what if somebody says that's not true? What if they disagree? What if they get angry at me for having that truth? What if, like, it's a fear, and so we go like, okay, well, now I'm gonna give data to back it up, because they can't argue with this. But frankly, that's actually when we're giving people something to argue with. Just the, I don't, nobody can argue with, I don't like this. They can ask why. <laughs> but they actually can't argue with, I don't like this, or I'm ready to go now or no thank you, because that's all on me. So for the purposes of this, I'm kind of sweeping aside like true, not true in the story as irrelevant. Not that it is true or it isn't true, but a little bit irrelevant. And so a beautiful way to practice is to assume that I know nothing about the other. That doesn't mean that I need to stay and find out but any place that I'm gonna start saying, well, because they this, or this, that, and the other, or I know this about them, is like, oh, actually, I know nothing. I know nothing about them, but I do actually know what I feel. And so the practice becomes, what do I need in order to listen, to hear what I feel, and then to trust it? And ultimately, I mean, I did really distinguish these steps because it's so, um, Frankly, I think it's so culturally counter 
to truly stand in and act on our truth, that I'll almost always give women the practice, like for a week or two weeks or three, something like that for a certain period of time to notice what do they know to be true and what would I do? What would I do right now if I wasn't afraid or if I didn't think I would be judged or if, no one, if, I, if it wasn't too selfish, right? Things like that. What would I do? simply to bring awareness. Wow, right now, if I didn't think anyone would judge me, I would order a double scoop instead of a single scoop. Right now, if I didn't, you know, if I wasn't, if I wasn't afraid, I would end this dinner date now. Right now, if I wasn't afraid, and then I really distinguish, I'm like, you don't actually have to do that. You are now not beholden to doing that but it's worth at least telling yourself the truth. This is what I would do. This is tr actually what I want. This is what I feel. To at least tell that part of yourself like, oh, I'm listening, I heard you, and I acknowledge that I heard it. And then there's the, the added step, you know, ultimately of getting to the place of most of the time or more of the time or finding the way that it becomes ecological to begin to bring action to that. So again, you know, I work with basically all of my women clients, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in the group setting of Fierce Grace or in our live retreats like Sacred Sovereignty in February, in many, many like myriad practices um, to bring up this piece of our, of our self-trust, finding what is our truth and really learning how to stand on that groundless ground. I think this is probably one of the most, if not the most, fundamental uh, practice and art for women in the world today, probably, you know, forever, but certainly in the world today. So just checking one last time. Oh, see, there's a bunch of comments that I, I don't know why this happens. Um, so I'm going to check a couple comments here. So Penelope says she's laughing about remembering a Dr. Phil quote about saying never trusting someone else, it's do you trust yourself to deal with whatever, yes. So the last part of that comment got cut off, but I think that, that that's one of the pieces, like do I trust myself uh, to be available for whatever happens or to deal with what happens or do I, you know, do I trust myself? I think about like um, also getting into situations, like wait, how can I trust that situation or can I not? And ultimately it's like, wait, do I trust myself to to remove myself if I need to? Do I trust myself to like continue to act on my behalf? And frankly, there's some truth to why, or there, there's some validity to, to being able to say like, no, I don't trust myself. I have a track record of abandoning myself. But we don't have to continue that. So we can say, yeah, I don't fully trust myself and there's good reason. And it's like, okay, cool. I can acknowledge that and then say like from here on, like I'm probably gonna fuck up again and I probably will abandon myself again, but this is my intention and this is how, this is the, this is how I'm going to follow through on that intention. And even when I fuck up, I'm gonna go like, oh, look, I just abandoned myself. Like, I'm so sorry. Okay, here, let's step back on the, on the um, groundless ground here again. So Allison, let's see, it's such a good topic. I have a buzz live stream about this somewhere. Uh, oh, well, thank you, my love. I'm sure you were very eloquent. Maybe you could post it in here as well so people can get that perspective. Um, and thank you. I'm glad that, that this resonates for you. Um, and Penelope, yes, the lobbying, right? Like this, I mean, so one of the places I catch myself doing this, I do it inside myself less than I even do it with other people, although I catch it with other people as well, but I'll catch myself having arguments with myself inside my own head. And for me, that's a little, it, it is, it's like lobbying. I'm like, rah, rah, rah. Um, just like you said, Penelope. So that's actually one of the signs for me to walk back to what am I defending? And typically then that's where I find that, like that solid truth that's just, you know, one word to a sentence. And then I got scared somewhere along the way. So catching the lobbying, however that lives for you, super valuable practice. And then walk it, start to learn how to walk it back to the truth. Let me just check here. Um, hi, Tara. 
I'm so glad you love this. Yes, Allison, like trust ourselves even if the ground beneath us, beneath us falls away because I guarantee it will feel like that. Maybe not every time. You know, I think there is a point where it feels less like that, but it will happen again, like I guarantee. It's so important to remember that. There will be a time and maybe many where it feels like the ground beneath us is falling away. And honestly, I believe that's when we're finding our most solid ground. But just like you said, Allison, I believe it will not feel like that. Um, Jean said, I've learned to trust what is demonstrated, not words. As the adage goes, actions speak louder than words. And I think that's absolutely true. And it, right beside that, it's not, it's not to discount that, but right beside that, I would say there's this place also to trust, just trust ourselves. And so we may, somebody may seem to be demonstrating something and it's like, but I just don't want to engage with them that way. And it's like, that's okay. Or, um, I mean, this goes with what you're saying about trusting actions over words, but I see also, again, I see this a lot with women, which is like, well, he or she, it happens a lot in intimate partnership, but that, well, I've asked them for this and they're not doing it. And well, what do I do now? Yeah, I, I you know, it's like, well, at some point you have to trust it. You take responsibility actually and like trust yourself. They're actually showing you. So... So I think what you're saying is really true, Jean. And and sometimes we know, even when we don't have, like all, seeing all of their actions over time to back it up. Sometimes we just know. And it doesn't, oh, this is what I think is important about what you said, which is, and this is why I wanted to bring in, you know nothing about them. So if I don't, for instance, if I'm sitting somewhere and I say like, wow, I don't trust you, that actually doesn't mean that person is not trustable. It, it doesn't. And what I would say is that it doesn't matter. I don't trust them. And that is important to me. Somebody else may trust them and they may be right or wrong also. And it, it's like, it just becomes, it becomes irrelevant. When we really drop into that, what's, what's that internal? And it's a weird thing where it become, it's like incredible radical self-responsibility um, it becomes somewhat irrelevant and we can still, it, it's not like we become disconnected from the other and we can still actually name people's actions and things like that, but it becomes kind of irrelevant. I hope that makes sense. Christine said, I like the groundless ground expression, being comfortable with the uncomfortable groundlessness. Yes, as the most solid ground for my, my being. Yeah, it is. Um, I always feel like this also comes from my Buddhist background. I remember, I mean, it was in a totally different context, but one of my teachers was talking about that basically that we never see reality unmediated. And so there, there is, he, he's basically saying there is objective reality and then there's what we see. And sometimes they match up. And then we like to say, I'm seeing reality because my projection and objective reality matched. But he says it does, it's, it's not. It's actually still objective reality and your projection, they just happen to match. <laughs> and, and that's the same. It's sort of like, there's just groundless ground, but actually that's where we find our most solid ground because that's all, that's it. Hi, Al. Oh, I love you too. Thank you. <laughs> ah, for some reason, all these pieces are down here. I just want to check. Nicolette um, has a question. How do you stay with that simple truth and avoid going into story after the point when the other asks why? Great question. Um, so I'm going to need to end probably really soon after this, but Most, the, the simplest thing and that I wanna give here, because it's often, the, this is the most true across the board, is to slow down. So the first piece is just remember that you don't owe them an explanation. And, it, and it, again, it can come all the way from a woman I was talking to the other day who had a man coming on to her inappropriately and, and, and really remembering that 
she could just say, I'm going to leave. And she didn't owe him an explanation around why. That's a full, full stop. I don't want to be here. I'm going to leave. Um, but, you know, on the other end of the spectrum, there's people that we actually want to be in relationship with. And so it's less about like, I owe you nothing, you know, like, don't ask me. It's, we don't want to push them away. But there can be a relational place of slowing down and saying, it might, the, the truth might be, I don't know yet. And that's a slowing down that says, I, I really want to include you in this, but I don't know yet. Um, so I remember actually with my ex-husband doing this one time, it used to happen for me. We had an open relationship at one time. And I remember saying I didn't trust a certain woman and he asked why or something. And then I started to fabricate a lot of reasons to justify why that was true. And I caught myself about five minutes in and dialed it back and I was like, I don't know if any of that's true, but I don't trust her. And, um, let's see, I was sharing this because, something about being able to share with someone, oh, is being honest about is like, I want to include you in this, but if I answer that question right now, I think I'm just going to be making things up and it won't serve us. Because that's what I caught myself doing with my ex. I was basically, again, some of it might have been true, but I was basically fabricating things to, to answer his question and justify that I didn't trust. And so it's acknowledging to that person, I, I, I wish I could answer that right now. Um, but if I do, I think I'm going to be lying and making things up. So right now, I don't know. Can we come back to this? Or will you check in with me tomorrow? Or so that's a, there, you know, there's a lot of nuance. We could probably talk about this for a whole nother half hour, but slow it down. That's my basic thing is slow it down. Remember that acknowledging I don't know is a valid truth. I don't know is a valid truth. And especially with those people that we're really intimate with, that we care about, that we trust, ultimately, is, is um, be willing to be honest about that part of you that would make things up just to fill that in. And that you don't want to do that with them. Let me see. Um, Christine, the practice is then to listen first to my inner knowing and start story. No, uh, um, the only, so I would say yes to that, but I would let go of the story completely. This is to Christine's question is to notice that the story will then pick up. And so drop the story, just drop it. It doesn't mean it's not true. So the practice isn't about going like, Oh, my story's not true. It's just projection. I don't know. And letting, you know, like maybe I'm not true. Maybe it's not true that I can't trust this person, but it's going, Oh, the truth is I don't trust. The story wants to go and just let it go. Sit with the discomfort of just like, I don't, I don't want to be here or I like this or I do want to be here. I wish I was closer to them. I wish they would sit next to me without any let go. Oh my goodness, there's so many good questions. Um, Desmond said, how can you be sure what your truth is? Sometimes it's the head, sometimes it's the heart. Well, and sometimes it's many, many other things. Uh, so I just walked a woman through a process this morning where she asked herself the same question like five times. I had her basically ask her pelvis and sacrum. I had her ask her gut and her belly. I had her ask her solar plexus, her heart space, both front and back. I had her ask her throat, you know, and the expression, and I had her ask her like third eye and higher knowing or, or guidance from above. Now, some of you just may not be into any of those things and you're like, ah, that's just weird. Um, I had a woman one time in a workshop I led. Well, I had all of them. I had women, I had them ask their feet. It was around, what do you stand for? And they actually asked their feet and listened to what their feet said. And a woman came up to me afterwards and she had a memory of being six years old and a strange man coming to the door and, and saying that he was supposed to come in. And we, I don't know anything about this story. It didn't turn, you know, there was no, no data afterwards to prove one way or the other, but she literally remembers like something coming in and she said, um, I said no, uh, because my big toe told me so. 
that's the way our truth speaks to us. I'm not saying that the brain doesn't have a lot of valuable stuff to say, but the, but the, 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 what comes from our brain and where there's a lot of words and when it makes a lot of sense is often not our truth. I said no because my big toe told me so. Like I guarantee, again, we don't know that he was like a creepy man or he was doing anything wrong, but it was absolutely true for her as a six year old with a strange man at the door to say no and not let him into the house. So that's a, I mean, that's a practice one can do in oneself, but it, again, it, it helps to have some facilitation sometimes because we can trick ourselves. So how do we know that's a, that's a practice? And frankly, you know, Desmond, you have a lot of practice with that. A lot of the, the practices that you've done with John over the years. Um, and one of the things is to, like I said, is maybe to ask those different parts of your body, sometimes lower than the heart, right? Like the feet or the sacrum. Um, you know, you're a man, so I would say like, you know, your balls, like just ask them. And then the practice is actually to listen to what the answer you get without either questioning from your mind or justifying from your mind. Just go like, oh, that's, that's the truth of well, like what my balls just told me. I hope that helps. Um... I love that, Penelope, about it's not until everything falls apart that we discover the indestructible. Uh, Jean, I'm glad that landed. And, and yeah, I mean, I, again, to underscore that, like, their actions, they do matter and they don't. So it's, it's a little bit of a both and. Um, oh, man. <laughs> Julie says, I'm wondering, how does this relate to those life dilemmas where acting on our inner trust creates hurt in others? you equally as truly don't want to hurt? Man, that is a big question. Um, I think I'm gonna need to put that on hold and maybe do a second piece about that because it's such a big question that I, would, I wanna speak to all the nuances of that and, um, and kind of keep this in this frame and then also give that the time that it deserves. So thank you for that question, Julie, and I will bookmark it and talk about it. Um, I'm happy to hear that, Anne. So Christine says, what I understand is that I don't trust you is just like saying no or stop. A no that we might see as a separation rejection, but that is in objective reality a real connection in the whole. It can be, I mean, it, there are times where it's like, yeah, I don't want that person in my life, um, but they don't have to be. What I would say is that it doesn't have to be, depending on, you know, it can be a person that we still want connection with and actually including our no or including I don't trust you, it's actually a pathway to connection. Because if I remove that, I've basically removed that piece of my truth. And it's, and it's not only the part that's like, I don't trust you, but it's like, I don't even trust you with the truth that I don't trust you. So that's an important piece to look at. <laughs> I love all these questions. I have to close soon to go pick up my daughter. Um, beautiful. Yeah, you get a lot of adrenaline in your hands when the answer is no. So, I mean, that's just beautiful. Or when it's take action now, right? So you have something you already know. But that's an important thing to listen to. Um, <laughs> that's the truth. Yes, Desmond. Woohoo! Carl says, inner voice versus internal dialogue. Can you say more how about to differentiate? I would, I would refer back to what I said about simplicity versus a lot of words internal dialogue has a lot of words that talk back and forth to each other they make sense they get angry they're defensive um, they cajole you know but there's a lot of words so that's the simplest way to recognize an inner voice i mean it's the weirdest thing but it it's usually the one that makes no sense or it's the one that says something incredibly like succinctly and directly also your inner voice is not mean. It's neither mean to you or to other people. So again, saying no is not mean. Saying no because you're purdy and creepy and I know I can't trust you, that's actually mean. Also to yourself, your inner voice that says, oh my God, you're such a fuck up and I know that I can't trust, da, 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 that's being mean to yourself. So your inner truth, is, it's never mean. I think I can say that with certainty. Um... Yeah, thank you, Penelope. I've loved what you have offered as well. 
And Christopher says, I trust you. Thank you. <laughs> That's delightful to hear. Um, actually, now I'm hearing you're saying, I trust you is a word that has attachment. I trust myself when I'm near you is better. Yes. Um, I think that's true, but also I think sometimes I trust you or I don't trust you. It can also, it may have attachment. Frankly, I find a lot of value in that, um, on both sides. For me, I find value in just acknowledging I don't trust you, but it's from me. I'm the one not trusting. It's sort of irrelevant, but I also, you know, frankly, like with my boyfriend or, you know, there's men that I work with and I, and I, it, I would say in the framework that I work with, without going into a lot of detail, but it's for the masculine in all of us, but offering our trust is like nourishing. When, when someone offers their trust to me, it nourishes the masculine in me that it longs to be trusted. Um, and I see that when I offer it to my boyfriend, when I offer it to the men that I work with, when I offer it to the masculine and women too, is that it, there's like a nourishing balm to hear like I try, well, thank you, Christopher. <laughs> I know I, I sort of took that and ran with it because it felt so good. Um, but I, I also get what you're saying. So, so I don't disagree with you that there's an attachment to the other, but I also very much work in the realm of that we do impact each other and in the realm of intimacy and connection and um, in the interdependence. So I also see value in that, even though it's true that there's attachment. So... Um, so thank you. I mean, just thank all of you who were here. That was so, I, I so loved the engagement and I really appreciated the depth of the conversations and the questions. And I, I personally, I think that I, um, it brings forward the best in me when I get to respond to people. So, um, I just really, really appreciate that. And if anyone then watches the replay, uh, I also encourage your dialogue, your questions, your shares in the replay, and I'll come back and we can do that via writing, even though it's not live here. And just thank you so much. That was so nourishing for me, and I hope that it was helpful for you as well. Last piece, Carl said, um, you're working with John. That's fantastic. I love John very, very much. And, um, and I'm very glad that it was worth it for you to check in on this as well. So perhaps I'll see you one day at one of our co-ed events. Um, and yes, Nicolette, I'm glad. Yes, slowing down rarely is harmful. <laughs> it's very often helpful. So thank you very much for your question. That was really important too. So, whoo! Thank all of you for being here with me and for any of you who watched the replay. Okay. Ciao, have a wonderful day.